Good evening, Ken. It's nine o'clock in Djibouti. In time for the English news, our major stories for tonight are the end of the workshop on Islamic Development Fund. The arrestation of top one the genocide suspect. Those were the top stories. Thank you for joining us here on RTD's newsroom. The seminar on Islamic financing on small and medium business has been closed today at the Charlton Hotel. This four-day seminar was organized jointly by the Economic Development Fund for Djibouti in collaboration with Islamic Research and Training Institute and that of the EDB Group. The closing the ceremony has been has seen the presence of the Secretary General of the Economic and Financing Minister and among other concerned personalities. Including uh, during these four days, uh, the participants have had a knowledge on the concept and the foundation of financing small and medium opportunities enterprise, as well as with their rules according to the Islamic uh, jurisprudence and the Jerusalem law. This uh, seminar was an opportunity of the greater awareness as to the importance of adequate funding to the SMEs, uh, which enable it to be an effective means of employment, uh, a fight against uh, poverty, and the promotion of economic and social progress. The Secretary of State in the Ministry of Justice and Public Security of Norway, along with the delegation of Norway, went to the refugee camp of Ali Adi in the region of Ali Sabir. Upon his arrival on the scene, he was warmly greeted by the Executive Secretary of Honor, Mr. Hussein Hassan Darar, in the presence of the Deputy Prefect of the locality and the UNCCR representative in Djibouti, as well as by the Honor IC, the Norwegian Council of Refugees. Note that the camp of Aliad is the largest refugee camp of the country. It hosts some 19,000 refugees and asylum seekers whose 80 percent are Somalians. After a long discussion with the refugee community living at the camp, the Secretary of State, along with the delegation, has scheduled a, a visit to the different centers of the camp, such as the new housing site of 450 units, which is in the core yard of the most vulnerable household, as well as he has visited the large stock of food for the refugees. The Secretary of State and the Ministry of Justice and Public Security of Norway has commended the relations of friendship and fraternity between the Republic of Djibouti and Norway. Indeed, uh, in information seminar on this rhythm of attractiveness uh, that Djibouti offered to Japanese investors has been organized by the authorities of Poor and Free Zone uh, with the collaboration of Embassy of Djibouti in Japan. This seminar has seen the participation of Japanese uh, businessmen whose uh, delegation is expected in Djibouti. The ambassador of Djibouti in Japan, His Excellency Ahmed Arre, and the chairman of the authorities of the poor and prison were present at this uh, seminar. Let's watch for more details. In the process of becoming a prominent actor, Djibouti has generated a lot of interest in Japan, where was held the last seminar on investment and business opportunities in Djibouti. This seminar has been an initiative of the Free Zones and Port Authorities President, Mr. Abu Bakr Omar Hadi, and his collaborators who came especially from Djibouti and welcomed the success of this activity. Indeed, more than 170 investors and Japanese business community representative attended to the events held in collaboration with the Embassy of Djibouti in Japan and the Japan External Trade Organization known as JETRO. It is in front of a packed chamber that was held the last investment seminar in Djibouti. A very large number of participants have responded to the invitation where Mr. Tatsuhiro Shindo, Jetro Executive Vice President, which has inaugurated this event. This organization is an important partner for research and the promotion of business opportunity in Africa and who will make easier the presence of Japanese company. The Djibouti ambassador in Japan last year has been very productive in terms of harmonization and cooperation, a symbol of vitality. A parliamentary Japanese group will be coming in Djibouti in mid-December.
Today Africa is going forward with a bright and a promising future thanks to the vision and the leadership of His Excellency President Ismail Omar Gheli. Djibouti has become a transport, trade and communication hub. This seminar on investment has been well prepared with the distribution of several detailed documents on the present situation and Djibouti's futures plan. The Djiboutian delegation led by the Free Zone Sport Authority's President Mr. Abu Bakr Omar Hadi has made a presentation on the vision of Djibouti's future and the business opportunity this country represents. A key element that needs to be reminded was Djibouti's strategic location and its maritime vocation to sea. 65% of the world maritime transport scrolling. A round table has gathered Japanese investors who are looking into the possibilities to assume a prominent presence in Djibouti. Each of them has had its part of experience and enthusiasm of Djibouti in the sector of activities they represent. One of them has projected a photo where we have seen in the presence of President Ismail Omar Ghali to illustrate that Japanese contractors are welcome in Djibouti. The creation of a free zone in Djibouti is a major project which has generated a lot of interest among the participation. Tadashi Yokoyama, the Asian director of the African Development Bank, this seminar on investment was very sophisticated and the very clear explanations on the attractions of Djibouti for investors and business people. This last seminar in Djibouti has allowed to break the ice and initiate a genuine dialogue with Japanese potential investors. We have been surprised with the rate of participants in this conference. These Japanese businessmen have mounted a large interest to come and create their companies in Djibouti's free zones. There are some of these companies who are going to make the movement on the next weekend already. It has been a success. The professionalism with which this seminar has been organized has generated positive feedback from the participants. We need to act without delay as a result of what I have learned today on the many opportunities that Djibouti's offer. The souvenir photo on the sideline of this event, bringing together its organizers and its stakeholders, might be entitled, A Beautiful Success for Djibouti in Japan's Mission Accomplished. And now heading on to the Tijara region in the framework of its plan to contribute to the efforts of the government for the support of the poorest families in the country. The Rescue African Committee State of Kuwait has executed during the last week the rescue campaign to the various provinces of the interior. The delivery of food donation as well as a medical caravan in the town of Tijara took place. In this context, the Commission has distributed approximately 1,300 food packages, financial amounts and an additional 1,300 clothing and gifts for the ch children. This campaign, which has been funded by the benefactors of Qadr State, has taken place under the supervision of the Regional Director of the African Committee, Abdul Qani Al Qureshi. And project director of the committee, Mr. Ilmi Yusuf, the launch of this campaign is part of the official integration of the complex. On the other hand, the commission organized a medical caravan for the most in need population of Tajoro region. Indeed, these families have benefited from various consultations carried out by the doctors, specialists offered by the Rahma Hospital at Balbala. In cooperation with the health agents of the region, all the consultations were free of charges. In the framework of the collaboration between the National Union of Djibouti Women and the NGO Arrahma has opened a house day for the free consultation for the benefit of mother and children was held yesterday at the headquarters of the UNFD. More than 600 children and mothers were treated and benefited from the care and have been consoled by the doctor of Rahma. This consultation comes in the context of health cooperation and charity initiated between the two parties of the benefit of poor families. The General Secretary of UNFD, Ms. Fatuma Musa, and the parents have thanked the NGO for this support intent to the improve of the health of the mothers and children.
The campaign for the establishment of teachers survey has been ended yesterday in the region of Arta after the killing Tijara by the inspections of Menfab. This operation, which has mobilized all the inspectors of the basic education, it should be noted that these reviews of integration have enabled these teachers to start their profession and get paid. Let's also underline that a lot of rigor and strict evaluation of skills are applied in this operation. For this occasion, the jury testified to the desire of MENFOB to enhance and to move forward in its policy in order to improve the quality of teaching in our educational system and more particularly in the development of the teaching staff. This campaign has been successful in these three regions of the country for the regularizing the basic education teachers Trainee. Crippen has housed yesterday the ceremony of handing over a donation of a textbook offered by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to the Republic of Djibouti and in particular the private educational establishment of Arabic language. The reception ceremony which was held at the Crippen has seen the presence of a senior executive and managers of the MEMFOB. The Saudi delegation had made with the official of the MEMFOB on the ways and means to strengthen the cooperation in the field of education and culture between the two Ministry of Education. Thereafter, they have proceeded to the distribution of manuals composed of school textbooks. In his intervention, the charge of Embassy of Saudi Arabia first, Mr. Hassan Mohammed Al Ahmari said he was pleased to mark his donation, which is the framework of agreement on cooperation in the field of science of education and culture, conclude a couple of months ago between the Djiboutian and Saudi minister in Riyadh during the visit of the Djiboutian minister of education to Riyadh. As for the Executive Secretary of the MENFOB, Mr. Mohammed Sadiq Saleh has expressed its sincere thanks on behalf of the Minister of National Education, Dr. Jama al maki and said he was assured that this donation was only a first milestone of academic cooperation and cultural in which are combined together the Republic of Djibouti and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Direction to detail a training of technical development and fertilization of soil and facility system of irrigation has been closed yesterday morning in Mulut locality. It has been organized by the NGO Peace and Milk and SF Action Against Hunger. During this training, a cooperative includes several agro personal areas, namely the cooperative Mulut, Aila, and Asagela, for three days. This training comes in the framework of implementing the second phase of the project of strengthening the managerial capacity and productive cooperative agropastoral financed by the European Union. In a fortnight, the final phase of the National Youth Games this weekend, it was the turn of the Arta region to make their final meeting. This is the end. A commission composed of members of Organizing Games Committee performed the delivery of badges of sport materials for the benefit of the teams. Thus, four sport will be played, namely football, handball, volleyball and boxes. It means uh, immense uh, football where our team has uh, won the game and regarding uh, the women is uh, football Arta girls uh, have uh, competed with the Demerdog team. On the other hand, uh, the handball and volleyball matches were held at the multi-sport field in Amia. For this occasion, the head of uh, the delegation, uh, Mr. Aydarus Hussein, Inspector General, thanked the authorities of the region. He also paid travel to the head of uh, Military Academy for the sportive infrastructure provision of AMIA. The National Youth Games are an integral part of the policy initiated by the head of state, His Excellency Ismail Margil in order to promote not only the physical and sport activities but also for the youth. This politics is focused on detecting young talent and has been implemented by the State Secretary for Youth and Sport under the supervision of the Secretary of State for Youth and Sport, Mr. Badul Hassan Badul.
we have learned the sad news of the death of Mr. Maki. The latter was the first secretary council of Tijara. The death occurred on the road of Lake Asel, located 55 kilometers from Tijara. Mr. Hamad Maki Ibrahim was born in 1946 in Tijara. He was a seasoned executive in the health ministry for more than three decades before retiring in 2001. Thereafter, Mr. Hamad was elected to Tijara Regional Council in 2016 and re-elected in 2012, where he held the post of first secretary. The disease still leaves behind him a widow and seven children, including three boys and four girls. The Regional Council of Tijara loses a major power. His passing will leave a huge void in the administration of Tijara Regional Council. By learning this disappearance, the presidents of the Regional Council of Tijara in Obok, as well as the Prefect of Tijara, Abdul Malik Ponita, address on behalf of local councillors in prefecture and their names. Deepest condolences to all the family and friends of the deceased. Furthermore, the President of the Assembly, Mr. Muhammad Ali Hamad, and the Minister of Women's Empowerment, Mrs. Hasna Barkhad Daoud, the former Prime Minister, Mr. Dilata, Muhammad Dilata, address their sincere condolences to the family of the deceased Hamad Maki, who was a personality of a national scope and appreciated for his great culture and general knowledge in many areas. May Allah grant him in his internal paradise. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja'un. Moving on to the regional and international level, top Rwanda genocide suspect of rest in the Democratic Republic of Congo, Ladislas, uh, expect to be sent to Rwanda for 12 years after fleeing to this year under protection of the rebels. Let's listen for more details. Fugitives Rwandan genocide suspect, a former mayor accused of crime against humanity, has been arrested in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The United Nations said Ladislas Ntaganzwa is accused of organizing the massacre of thousands of Tutsis at various locations. The UN-backed Mechanism for International Criminal Tribunal said in a statement issued on Thursday, a day after the arrest, he was also alleged to have orchestrated rapes and sexual violences committed against many women. The statement said no details of his arrest were given. After the explosions of three car bombs in a Syrian town, up to the six people have lost their life and 80 others wounded. Let's listen with more details. The car bomb explosion in the town of Tel Tamer in Syria, northeastern Al Hasakah province, killed at least 22 and injured over 100 people on Thursday. The blast struck near a Kurdish militia force field hospital and in the crowded Souk al Juma market square where the majority of the fatalities occurred. Most of the affected people were civilians but there were some Kurdish and Assyrian self-defense fighters among them. The vehicles were allegedly packed with large amounts of explosive which also inflicted significant damage to nearby buildings and infrastructure. No group has yet claim responsibility for the attack. Tel Temer is predominantly inhabited by Kurds, Arabs and Assyrians. The town also home to Assyrians. Christian community has become a target of numerous terror attack and incursions by Islamic State militia over the last months. This is it for this edition. Thank you for your attention. The program still continues after today and have a wonderful evening.